I'm Steve Gambio, the lead pastor at Life Church, and I'm so glad we have this time together. It is so important to stir up hope and life and empowerment and equip people to make a difference today. That's what we're all about here at Life Church. So as we listen to today's message, I really hope it impacts you and inspires you to make a difference in your world. Christ is all of our responsibility. Carrying Christ is the essence of what makes Christmas Christmas. For many, Christmas, the Word is all about the tree and the trimmings and all of that. But for us, it should be about carrying the Christ that is central to what this whole season is about. And if you think about the Christmas story, if you think about the nativity scene that we've seen playing out many, many times. If you think about that, it actually was only possible because people said yes to carrying Christ. It was made possible by a simple, but actually a very profound yes that God chose in this whole nativity to not do it just with divinity's involvement, but with humanity's. And actually he was looking for a yes, not just from one, but from several people, a yes to carry in Christ. He began by approaching Mary. An angel visited Mary and the question was actually, would you be willing, though you don't understand the ask that is coming to your life, would you be willing to be a vessel that will carry something, something far greater than you, something far greater than anyone could wrap their minds around. But that baby that was heaven sent needed a womb to be carried in. And so an angel in Luke 6 verse 26 came. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, the town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And the angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. Church, you need to know carrying Christ means you're highly favored. The fact that we get to carry His hope and His goodness and His love and His light and His peace, it means that we are highly favored favored, the Lord is with you. And Mary, like a normal, scared, visited by an angel in an afternoon when you were just doing the laundry, would be. Mary was greatly troubled at His words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son and you are to call him Jesus and he will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. But how will this be? Mary asked the angel. Since I am a virgin, And the angel answered, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month for no word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. So may your word to me be fulfilled. And the angel left her. The whole story involved someone's yes to carry in Christ. And the story of Christmas today still involves our yes to carry in Christ. Our yes to being overshadowed by Him. Our yes to being consumed by the one that is greater than us all. Our yes to understand that actually we get to carry within us light to dark places. 
We get to carry within us hope to hopeless places. We get to carry within us peace when there seems to be no peace. We are called this Christmas to carry Christ. What you carry changes you. What you carry affects how you look. Her yes was going to mean a physical change. She would suddenly begin to change, not just in the way that she looked, but in the way that she would carry herself. Because what you carry changes what you eat. It changes what you wear. She was gonna be bigger and larger. She was gonna be more aware of what she put inside of her body because of what she was going to carry within her. And as we carry Christ, it should change what we look like. It should change what we eat of. It should change what we speak of. It should change our diet of conversation. It should change the kind of company we keep. When we carry Christ, our whole demeanour should change because He is within us. I watched yesterday the conversation play out with this young girl and Steve behind the counter. And I stood aback because I saw the presence of God. It was so evident. And I said to the kids, hold back. Dad's sharing. And the kids went, he's talking about Jesus again, isn't he? And I said, yes, he is. I said, just stand back and just let God do what God needs to do. When I stood and I just prayed, Because when you carry Jesus, people know it. They see it, they notice it. They want to ask, why are you happy? What is it about your family? Why is there peace on you? What is it that you're, what is it that's going on in you? You look different, you sound different. You're not rude like the other people are. You're not pushing, you're not grabbing, you're not talking. You know, we were on a train yesterday and the conversation turned the atmosphere blue as a whole load of drunk guys in their 50s got on. And I just thank thank God my kids had earphones in because if they hadn't, I would have said something. And I thought, how sad, because within a few moments, I know what you carry. The conversations were about degrading of women and their conversation was about how drunk they were gonna get that day and how wrecked they wanted to be. And they were talking about someone they hated in their office and it was so loud and it filled the atmosphere. And I thought, you know what you carry, good or bad, fills an environment. And I want to make you aware that you're called to carry Christmas. You're called to carry Christ. Mary had no idea. She had no idea what she was really carrying. Mary, if you'd have asked her, do you know? Do you know actually what this is gonna become? I think she would have shook her head. I said, all I know is my part was to say yes to carrying Christ. My part was to say yes. I don't really know about the rest, but maybe one day I will. Maybe I'll catch a glimpse of what this gift within me is truly going to mean. Do you know that right now, today, you carry Christ? Do you know that when you open your eyes in the morning, it's another opportunity to carry hope? Do you know that when you enter the mayhem of Christmas and family this season, that you don't just go with presents or with food, but you carry within you? peace that some of them haven't found for years. You carry within you a testimony of a life transformed because you agreed and you said yes to carrying Christ. And in all the small talk that seems to consume the table at Christmas time, there's a much bigger talk that you carry within you. It wasn't just Mary that said yes to carrying Christ. This miracle required a lot of people saying yes to carrying Christ. And the miracle requires not just one person, but an army of people. Joseph, he said yes to carrying Christ. Messed with his family plan, messed with the way that he saw his life looking. He 
wondered what people would think when his fiance was now pregnant. Wondered how people would judge them. Had a journey to organize to Bethlehem. But when he was visited and told of the plan, he said yes to, I will carry Christ. The donkey said yes to carrying Christ. Just an ordinary beast of burden. But there was a 70 mile journey that a pregnant Mary needed to make. And without the donkey, she wouldn't have been able to make it in the time that she did. And sometimes we can just feel, I just feel I'm a beast of burden. I just feel everybody puts stuff on my back. I just feel I'm always carrying the weight. I always end up with the load. I feel I'm the lowest in the scenario of people that get thanked or mentioned. I just feel I'm the donkey. But do you know what's on your back? Do you know that you're also carrying Christ? Do you know that what has been saddled on you is the most precious load that could be entrusted to you? Do you know that you're a crucial part of this story too? Wise men carry treasure for Christ. Traveled miles with precious frankincense and myrrh and gold because they were carrying gifts that would usher in a king. Their part was no less significant than anyone else's. And shepherds, they were asked, will you carry the good news? Will you carry Christ? Will you go tell people in the highways and the byways what you have seen? Because we need foot soldiers to go and carry Christ to those that do not know that this has happened on this eve. It wasn't just one. It began with a girl saying yes to carrying Christ, but then there was a Joseph that said yes, and there was a donkey that said yes, and there was a shepherd that said yes, and there was a wise man that said yes. And the yes is continuing from generation to generation, the yes of carrying Christ. And we are a room full of those that have said yes. I'm so proud to be part of a church that says yes to carrying Christ. And in all the fun stuff we do and in all the great times that we share, the most important thing has remained the most important thing for years at this church, that our yes is to carrying Christ. How do you carry Christ? Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And this is who you carry. Wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. If you don't know how to carry Christ, just pick one aspect. Wonderful counsellor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Could you carry peace this Christmas into your crazy? Well, my family are not peaceful. I didn't ask you about your family. I asked you, can you carry Christ into their chaos? Well, my family fight, but you're carrying the Prince of Peace, so you don't have to. I'm gonna go into all kinds of dysfunction this Christmas, but you're carrying the wonderful counsellor. I'm gonna go into a place where it's full of arguments and people throwing their weight around, but you carry the mighty God. 
I'm going to go to Christmas as a single parent, single mum. I'm going to spend it with my divorced mum. I'm going to be around a lot of bitter people. My kids don't have a dad this Christmas, but you are carrying the everlasting Father. You're carrying Christ. Don't forget what you're carrying. Let it change you. Let it shape you. Let it alter the way that you enter Christmas. You are carrying Christ. You are overshadowed by the Holy Spirit. You are highly favoured by God. You are chosen and you said yes. And the minute you said yes, He came on the inside of you. And maybe you just need to be more aware of what is on the inside of you than what is around you. For you are carrying Christ this Christmas. Hey, that's all we have time for now. And as we draw our time together to a close, our prayer and our confidence rests in God, that God is with you. So as you move forward into your week and month ahead, we know that you're gonna go on to make a greater difference in the world. Hey, we just want to take a moment to thank you so much for your friendship, partnership, prayer, and for standing with us on our campuses, through our conferences, and everything we do. We're praying for you. We're so grateful for all of your help and prayer and just keeping an eye on what we're doing. Thank you so much. Yeah, we want to pray blessing over you as you head into a new year, that this Christmas would be a time of refreshing for you, time of joy for you, but you would head into 2018 excited for your future as you've sown into our ministry with yes. prayers and partnering with us through podcasts and other things that you've done. We're praying blessing back on you. We pray strength to you and we pray that the dream in your heart would explode in 2018. We are better together. So thank you.